Hi everyone, let's begin. Let's understand a one interesting paper that has been already published in Management, Re Management Review Quarterly and it has been published in 2018. Six tips for your systematic literature review in business and management research. So let's talk about this paper has been published and you can see here what are these six basic steps those we have to take into consideration at the time of literature review. Number one is first important suggestion for literature review that is motivate the topic and statement the research question. That means we want to say author want to say the abstract and introduction are crucial elements for any research article and usually the reader decide after looking off at the abstract and or introduction whether he will read the entire article or not. So that means crucial part is abstract and introduction. On the basis of abstract and introduction, paper can be just rejected or paper can be accepted. So we can say why the author choose to approach the topic in the form of systematic literature review. So that's also another question is arises. So therefore we encourage authors to carefully develop and clearly state their research questions in the introductory section. Then we come to the identify the relevant literature in a systematic way. Here is author he want to say distinguishing feature of a systematic literature review is that the review process should be transparent and reproducible. It, this process must be so transparent and we can reproduce it. So we can say a definition of a search terms and keywords used to identify was literature and a careful description of the practical language availability and methodological so time frame article type everything should be well transparent from which year you are taking into consideration i mean what could be your time frame what is the article type whether these are the general published paper conference papers book chapters etc so all these things you have to take in taking into consideration then the third most important point is choose the right balance between the breadth and depth. Yes, the most important question is arises what could be depth and what could be breadth of the systematic literature review. I mean authors often face the dilemma of choosing between breadth and depth. When identifying and describing prior studies in general a good systematic literature review is characterized by the right balance between the breadth and depth by including all relevant studies but only describing important studies in more detail in a structured way. So the dilemma is often difficult to solve as a literature review should be coherent and cover a research field as a whole but it should not be an endless. That means some important point should not be eliminated and uh, that would be repetition of all these points should not be there and to solve this dilemma to some extent authors should make use of tables and figures to convey the most important concepts and information in an efficient. So that means we can say some important paper those are required that must be reflected in your systematic literature review means highly cited paper that must be reflected in your literature review otherwise there is that means you had ignored some important papers. So we can say breadth and depth of a literature review also depends on the maturity of the research field. So literature review on a mature topic requires that the authors analyze and synthesize a large body of literature in comparison to a review on a more novel field where only few studies exist. So the author of the editorial were once challenged to summarize the literature on the intersection of entrepreneurship and innovation. So that means that depends on your title, your topic, how, uh, I mean, how many number of papers are already published in the past. So developing clear inclusion and exclusion criteria and focusing on breadth instead of depth and on concepts rather than studies, the task between tasks become doable and in that way you can adopt this kind of process. Fourth point is focus on concepts, not studies. 
these try to focus only on concepts rather than on studies. So this involves a careful identification and evaluation of the underlying concepts used in that review, in this review. So which then guide the analysis conducted and we have to focus more on concepts rather than we are focusing on the studies. So systematic literature will need to be based on sound, logical and conceptual reasoning. Right. And uh, next point is derive meaningful conclusion. So this is the very important point here is that would be important to provide a descriptive overview on the topic and studies included. As well as this includes carefully evaluating and driving implications, pointing out gaps in the literature and outlining, outlining uh, avenues for future research. Then last top, last point is follow a coherent article structure because number of times people are saying your, st your storyline is somewhere is breaking. There is no coherence between the paragraphs. So coherence structure is a crucial element of structure research article. The introduction motives the topic and describes the contribution of the literature review. And in that way, the crucial part of the synthesis and interpretation of the literature review's finding. So this section can be need not lead to derivation of propositions or a conceptual model. So here is we can see there is the um, uh, like after incorporating all these things, there would be coherent structure in an absolute necessity for the systematic literature review. So I'm sure this paper I will give you in my description box so you can download that paper also. So you can just go through this paper before starting any systematic literature review. I hope this video would be helpful. Thank you. Keep watching.